What's up builders? I wanted to show you something special that you can do with a sweet little board from RC Power Servo, an old car window regulator motor, and a potentiometer. Like any good project, I'm going to start with a mock-up of the main components. This C-shaped bracket clips into existing slots on the motor and will give us a sturdy place to mount the plate that will hold the potentiometer later. The actuating arm has the geometry of the window motor gear on the underside and space for the plug that will interface with the potentiometer on the top. If you're building this and you have access to the original connector and a bit of the wiring harness from the donor car, grab that. If you don't have access to the original plug, I'll show you what I did to make one. I started with a short section of 12 gauge wire and a set of 6.3 millimeter connectors, which are commonly used in small electric vehicles such as power wheels. These terminals require a specific crimping tool that I'll have a link to alongside the rest of the parts for this project in the description of this video. My favorite method of adding the terminals is to first grasp them in the crimp tool then slide the wire in, as opposed to trying to get the tool over a crimp that's already in place on a wire. Once both terminals are on the cable, they are slid into the back of the connector. The terminals have a backward facing tab that into the connector body, preventing them from pulling out. I don't want the two wires to continue to separate, so I'll add a section of heat shrink tubing before moving on to the next step. Tinning is the process of adding solder to a part in advance, making it easier to later join that part to another. This is especially useful in areas that are hard to access. Setting our newly made pigtail aside, we'll tin the motor leads in preparation for joining the two. Then simply heat up the solder once the wires are in place, and voila, your mystery motor now has a reliable connector. Solder, in and of itself, is probably fine, but to give the motor leads some more mechanical bonds to the body and add a little water resistance, I filled the holes around the joint with hot glue off camera. Again, using the 12 gauge wire, a 6.3 millimeter connector, and the ratchet crimp, I built an extension cable to attach to the RC power control board. Please excuse my stylish customized wire strippers. I've really come to love this crimp tool, as I've used it to make extension cables for servo wires, motor leads, battery connectors, sensor wires, and just about anything else that you may need to connect together. If you happen to purchase one through the Amazon affiliate link below, you'll be helping support this channel in future videos. A test fit of the male and female connectors confirms a solid connection, and a bit of heat shrink ensures the wires don't continue to spread. I decided to tin the leads of this extension cable before screwing them into the motor terminals on the board to hopefully create a more secure fit. I find that copper wires, especially of this gauge, seem to slip out of these wire terminals a little too easily. And with motor power tidied up, it's time to turn our attention to what makes this project special, the feedback pot. I had these 3-pin JST connectors from another project, and they are perfect for wiring up to our potentiometer. A potentiometer, also known as a rotary variable resistor, or simply POT, works by changing an input reference voltage through increasing resistance. It then outputs the new lower voltage, providing something like a microcontroller with an electronic signal it can interpret to distinguish the physical position of the resistor. Basically, this spins and tells the RC power servo board where the motor is so we can control the motor position. The pot has a polarity that will need to be matched on the board. Luckily, the servo board is well documented and has very easy to follow wiring instructions. Then, it's time to test all the electrical components together. I hooked up the RC power servo board to my bench top power supply. I hooked the motor up and plugged in some jumpers to connect the board to the RC receiver. Then, being careful of polarity, I plugged the potentiometer into the board. Boom! Radio controlled window lift motor. And then the fun part started. I held the potentiometer firmly against the output gear of the window motor and like magic, the motor behaved exactly like a normal servo. Now it's time to mount that potentiometer.
As I mentioned, these parts were originally intended for a much smaller pot. I drilled the mounting plate out to accept the threads of the new 2K potentiometer. But the plate ended up not fitting into the bracket very well and required some sanding on the drill. If there's enough interest, I'll go over how I designed these parts for my motor and show you how you can do the same. This plate needs to be as firm as possible to provide precision feedback from the potentiometer. Any movement here will translate to a sloppy servo. Once the plate fit in the bracket, I reassembled the whole unit for a test. This time I put the quarter 20 screw in the center of the arm to prevent the potentiometer from being the only thing keeping the arm from popping off. It's quick in this shot, but I inserted a bushing on top of that screw that interfaced the arm to the potentiometer before pressing it into place. I didn't notice at the time, but that bushing was actually too loose in the arm, providing ever so slightly inconsistent feedback. I added some spacers to the plate and screwed it onto the C bracket below. Because the potentiometer is mounted to the plate with the little Phillips screws, I'm able to fine tune the center of the servo arm a few degrees at a time without disassembling the entire thing. Then it was basically finished. I added a thin layer of tape to the bushing to take up the slop and the feedback was immediately more responsive. The giant servo self-centered to the exact same place every single time. I love the way the speed ramps up and down depending on the input from the radio and the motion is very fluid. I added some zip ties for wire management and we're done. Overall, I really enjoyed the RC Power servo control board. I have done something similar in the past with a stripped down servo and an L298N motor driver, which is significantly cheaper, but also requires a lot more effort. Let me know if you'd like to see that Junkyard RC Power alternative in another video. If you're looking to get some fine control over some heavier objects, and this video was helpful, maybe consider hitting that like button. If this kind of stuff is interesting to you, or you'd like to see what I've got in store for my giant motor, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified when I upload another video. Check out the link below to a bit more technical information and a parts list over on the We Can Build That website. Thanks a ton for watching and remember, whatever that is, we can build that.